Oh, hey everybody, me Mudahar. Welcome to today's video brought to you by our friends over at Manscaped.com. The people who are taking over the world, and yes, you heard me, taking over the world. They just introduced the fourth generation electric body trimmer, the lawnmower. 4.0 into the market globally, which means international shipping to the United States, Canada, Australia, the UK, basically all of Europe, Singapore, and South Africa. The first stop to the galaxy of luxury nut shaving comes down to the Lawnmower 4.0, which actually comes with these replaceable ceramic blades with skin safe technology and a built in LED, by the way. So basically, you can shave your balls without worrying about any nicks and bruises. And let me tell you right now, okay, before I used to be scared of putting a blade up to my balls now my pews fly away like Harry Houdini let me tell you they just disappear and if you're worried about shaving that black hole of yours trust me it, it, it's safe all the way down there too and if you don't trust me I'll do it with you I promise apparently the uh, big brains over at Manscaped were so inspired by NASA that they had to make the brand new cool wireless charging system so you can actually see how much battery you have down here I don't even wirelessly charge my own phone but when it comes to my ball trimmer you bet I'm gonna use that new technology they also have this new travel lock feature they want me to tell you about which is great if you're ethnically challenged like me imagine going into an airport and then just having an actual live blade in your luggage not exactly the thing you want in fact it's so easy to use even a monkey could do it you just tap like three times over here and bang it won't let me use my blade don't worry it's as easy to unlock don't worry And if you get into the launch plan right now, they actually come with the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and Crop Reviver Ball Toner Spray. And these are perfect for those little asteroids when they're orbiting around the sun all day. Manscaped decides they want to go for Company of the Millennium by actually having a good old-fashioned nose and ear hair trimmer. The Weed Whacker to be more specific. Have you ever tried pulling a nose hair out? Things hurt like no tomorrow! But with the Weed Whacker, oh, life just gets a lot easier. And if you get that full performance package 4.0, you can even get some more bang for your buck by getting the peak hygiene planning, meaning they're going to keep giving you good old replenishments of all these favorite products flown right into your doorstep. And for a limited time, you can also get one, not one, but two free gifts, the Shet Travel Bag and the Anti-Chafing Boxer Briefs. So go to manscaped.com and get 20% off and free international shipping, plus two free gifts when you use the promo code SOMEORDINARY at checkout. Join the two million men worldwide who trust Manscaped and get your rocket ready for takeoff. Your balls and your body will thank you. Oh, Muda, that's a juicy title right there. You made the Muda phone? Well, kind of. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, over a week ago, I uh, ripped on something called the Freedom Phone, a phone that was completely uncensored with uncensorable app stores, preloaded applications, the first privacy free speech operating system i guess now ladies and gentlemen there's clearly a political side that this phone caters to it's not just making america great but also making a great phone uh of course news media ripped on this a fair bit okay they they, they definitely didn't like this the meant for trump supporters straight up telling you warning over the new freedom phone that claims to protect your privacy now ladies and gentlemen i i laughed at this phone because i think it's a grift okay at the end of the day it seems like a grift for me uh it's a it's most likely a hundred to two hundred dollar phone that has a custom privacy rom probably something like lineage os flashed onto it and sold right to you or sorry freedom os now back when i made the freedom phone video, I was laughing at the idea of this being a grift, but if you think I'm laughing at the idea of this actually being a logical idea, you're wrong. Because I think having a phone that's detached from Google, Amazon, Microsoft, really big tech in general, uh, is a good idea, okay? Having a phone that isn't constantly being pinged for its location, camera, microphone accesses, is a good thing. Now, I laughed at this because this is a $500 device that's, again, may I reiterate, in my opinion, a like $100 to $200 device being just drop shit to you with a custom ROM installed, and it's something that you can do yourself. Now, of course, while I laugh at something, I think it's unfair for me to just laugh at this and not show you how to do it, which is what this video is all about. So, how are we going to build this? For one, this is a Android-only affair, so if you're on an Apple device, well, this isn't going to be for you. Apple devices are different, okay? Apple it makes the hardware, they write the software, and they converge it together. There is no open source in the world of Apple. Now, Android is not the same across the board. You can't modify every phone. My daily driver is a Samsung Fold, and while I love this thing to death, you can't modify it with any Google device at all. That's because Android requires you, if you're going to write it yourself, to have device vendor IDs and hardware IDs. And a lot of Android phones, specifically in that higher-end market, are actually very proprietary. See, Android is kind of like a 
foundation, okay? And a lot of manufacturers like Samsung, like Sony, uh, Asus, OnePlus will actually build their own proprietary stuff on top. Now, some companies are real nice. Like OnePlus, from what I know, just ends up making everything open source, which is great. OnePlus devices are awesome. To make things easier for myself, I decided to go to Google and buy their Pixel. Now, you might be like, whoa, Muda, you were talking about decoupling from Google, okay? You t you're buying one of their phones to build the Muda phone? Yes, okay? The reason why I'm doing this is because Google Pixel devices, uh, or Nexus devices, if they still even make them, are sort of like the origin point for Android launches, all right? This is the first device that basically gets the newest version of Android. If you want that pure stock Android experience, I don't think you're going to get much better than a Pixel. The reason why I'm also picking this is for $349, you're getting a far better device. Now, the, and the Google Pixel 4a in this case isn't the most expensive device you can get. You can get a $499 device with 5G. You can even get a Pixel 5, which is like $600, $700 US. That is far better. Now, this is, these aren't like super amazing devices. This isn't like the highest end, like $2,000 smartphone Android ranges. But just to tell you, they end up getting 5.8 inch full HD OLED displays, which I would say are probably some of the best in the market that you're going to get. You get a pretty good battery, uh, 4G or 5G, depending on how much money you're deciding to drop, a 12 megapixel dual pixel camera, okay, which as far as the Google cameras go, I'm not a camera aficionado, go watch a Marquise Brownlee video for that. They're, they look good to me, and they come with a Snapdragon 730 or a 765G, which uh, again, those are pretty decent uh, processors. I've been able to play most of my games on there and the, system, the, the entire phone runs smooth. So again, this isn't a phone review. For 349, in my opinion, you're getting a better device than the fucking Freedom Phone, okay? So now that we have basically gone on what device I'm buying, all you really need to do is buy the device, grab it in your hands and start flashing a custom ROM onto it. Now, at this point, I could tell you to download any of the privacy-focused open source ROMs out there like Lineage OS and just install it. And that would be the end of the video. See, if you really care about your privacy and freedom and want to go every step of the way, maybe you should build the entire operating system on your own device. And that's where the real fun begins, buckos. So building Android isn't exactly the toughest thing that you're going to do. You're going to want some G Fuel in your system because it's going to take a long time. All right, Code Sog, by the way. Now, building Android is a bunch of little steps that you're going to have to go through. It's more time consuming than it is actually technical, but uh, you're going to need a pretty strong system to do it. OK, and something along the veins of six threads minimum. So here's the system specifications for my virtual machine. Now, in this system, I've got 12 threads that I'm passing through. So. I guess it's kind of like if you wanted to compare it to a real system, like six cores, hyper-threaded, right? You're also going to want to have to have 52,000 gigabytes, sorry, 52 gigabytes of memory. If that sounds like a typo, it's not, okay? Initially, I gave this 32 gigs of RAM because I thought that was enough, but it actually crashed during the build. So I ended up giving it like 52,000, didn't use anywhere close to the full amount, but at least it finished a build. And uh, that's pretty much it, ladies and gentlemen. Now, if that sounds like a lot of memory, we're building an OS, okay? If you don't have this, stop the video right now. You're not going to be able to build the operating system. So now that that's done, we need to have an operating system, right? And for this, we're going to use Linux. Now, you don't have to install Linux to a computer. You can do this all under a virtual machine. So go and download VMware or VirtualBox. I went with VMware, VMware Player, which is actually free to use for personal reasons. Download that and then go to ubuntu.com and download the Ubuntu, basically go to their website, click on download, and under desktop, you wanna click 21.04, okay? You can go the LTS, but just go with the newest one, and it'll let you download an ISO file. Now under VMware, which is what I used, install the actual thing like you normally would. So basically create a new virtual machine, follow the steps, and it actually should auto-install Ubuntu. Uh, if it doesn't, Installing Ubuntu isn't that terribly difficult. You boot into it, you click next a bunch of times, and it should be okay, all right? Follow the instructions. Now, when all of that is done, you should be at the Ubuntu home screen. Now, yours is going to look a little bit different, meaning that you don't actually have all these extra folders, most likely, uh, the, these two in specific. But uh, you're going to be at this home screen, right? And 
Th that's two testicles, by the way. I'm sorry, Ubuntu. That wallpaper is too dirty for me to have around the house. Here you can actually read what Google is using to build the operating system. They've got 72 core machines with 64 gigs of RAM. Yeah, no shit it doesn't crash for you, Google. That takes 40 minutes, by the way. So you're probably not going to have that system unless you're like one of those Threadripper boys and girls. So in that case, it's going to take a lot longer for you, all right? I'm going to tell you, this process is a long one. The sun's going to come up before we're even done. So the first things first, we have to install the necessary packages on the workstation, okay? So number one, let's click on this link and basically it takes us to this page where we're gonna establish a build environment. Now again, do this underneath Linux because that's what Google wants you to use, all right? Don't try doing this on a Mac. I don't even think you're gonna be doing this on Windows. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to the very first line where it says Ubuntu 18.04. You're gonna copy the code sample by clicking this button right here. And then you're gonna click these uh, nine square so the application drawer and you're going to type in the words terminal now this takes you to your home directory right so thickums dash virtual machine thickums is the name of the virtual machine okay if you couldn't figure it out now you're going to right click and you're going to paste this all right this is basically going to be all of the dependencies that you're going to download now one of the things that you also want to do is type in lib n curses five they actually include this like right here on, on this part of the actual line but uh you're gonna want this as well because it actually crashes during the build for some reason so hit enter and you're gonna enter the password so this is the root password for your account so your login account password mine is one two three hit enter and basically it's gonna tell you it's telling me that it's already installed but for you it's gonna install this. It's gonna ask you if you wanna install it, hit yes, and it's going to do all the work for you. Once that's done, it's time for you to go back to this page and in number two, while still in a terminal, install repo and gain credentials. So this is the repository tool that we're going to be using in order to actually build, or, or sorry, download the source tree, okay? So in this where it says working directory, let's call this Muda phone, all right? Just for the sake of clarity. Now, what it's gonna do is it's gonna ask you to make directory Mutaphone. Now, again, you wanna use the same terminal. Why? That's because it's set to the home directory, okay? You see how it has the tilde key? It's in the home directory. So you're gonna type make dir Mutaphone. You could have just copied it, but I'm just showing you it by typing. Then you're gonna do cd, which is change directory, and then you're gonna do Mutaphone. Pro tip in the terminal, use the tab key, and it'll just autofill everything for you. So it's like terminal tricks, right? Just do it right. Do it real quick. So here you're gonna make sure you set your Git, all right, to a registered Google account. Uh, I'm just gonna call it Mudahar uh, Anas, which is my name. And I'm gonna call it Muda at mudafuda.com, all right? Uh, again, uh, I'm just doing this for the sake of, you know, uh, for the sake of the video, use your actual registered Google accounts, okay? This is what you're gonna be using if you wanna do code reviews, right? So again, you're gonna copy this and you're gonna paste this and I'm actually going to use my real account, so I'm just going to copy and paste this the way that I want it, so we'll just skip that. So once you've copy and pasted all these two lines, then you're going to run repo in it, all right? Now, if you run repo in it like itself, it's probably not going to work for you, okay? And that's because you need to get something called repo, okay? And that's where you're going to have to initialize it. So click on this little link up here called installing the repo client, and here you're going to install repo by following these exact steps. So you're gonna make directory, and you're just gonna do this, make bin. You're gonna do path, all right, right here, and you're going to do, and you're just gonna copy and paste these lines. Then you're gonna download the repo launcher and ensure it's executable. So again, copy this, so curl, which is where we're gonna download this, uh, this tool from. Hit enter, it's gonna download it. Then we're gonna use chmod to make that executable. So again, it's just copy and pasting, right? Very simple, a monkey could do it. Then you can optionally verify that the launcher matches the signature, so you can paste these lines in, and that's just to make sure all of it is from Google and none, you didn't get hacked in any single way and get something sort of weird. Once that's done, now you can go back to the initializing a repo client page, so where we entered these lines, and go back to it. So here, we're going to copy this, all right? This is the latest version of repo with its most recent bug fixes. Now, you can always do repo init u and get the master branch for the absolute master. This is the one with some bug fixes, but if you do dash b space master at the end, you can get the master branch, okay? Now, at this point, I actually went with the master branch if I'm not mistaken, but either or, you know, you, you probably wanna go with this one. 
So as you do the repo, once it's doing its job, basically getting all of the repo sources, it's gonna ask you if you wanna enable color display to this account. Uh, just hit enter and eventually it'll say repo has been initialized in home slash thickens slash mutaphone. Now at this point, you're gonna write the words repo sync C J12. So dash C dash J12 is important. If you do this, if you basically take these words out, it's going to take even longer. Uh, but if you type in dash C and J12, where 12 is the amount of threads you have for this system, it is 12. So I'm giving it, I'm giving it 12 threads. Uh, I think it could be 11 or 12. Um, point is, once you enter this, it's going to take a few hours to potentially a day because this is downloading over a hundred gigabytes of source code. And even on gigabit connection, it takes time. So once you run this, feel free to walk away, play a video game or whatever, because it's not going to be done in a few minutes. It's going to take hours to a day. I'm telling you. So anyways, once that's done, all right, uh, time has passed. All right, I've already done it. Uh, you've noticed that I've changed to droid build. You don't need to do that. I've only done it because droid build is the directory where I've already downloaded this stuff to. I'm just doing it for the sake of the video. But you're probably still going to be in that Mutaphone directory, right? Once it's all downloaded and ready to go. So the next thing to do is to have all of your proprietary binaries. Now, this is where I said not every device could be modified because Samsung doesn't give its proprietary binaries out. So you can't build AOSP on it. You also can't even unlock the bootloader as far as I know. Now, certain manufacturers like OnePlus or whatever will give you those binaries, but we're building it on that Google Pixel 4a. So we're gonna need the 4a binaries. Now at this point, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna either click the first link if you didn't download the master branch like we talked about earlier, or if you did download the master branch, they're telling you to use the binary preview. Now I use the master branch, so I'm gonna click on this. What you have to do is you have to find the Google Pixel 4a and ours is non 5G. So it's gonna be all the way down here in Google Pixel 4a, which is the 4a binaries 7543667, okay? So this is, this is the binary that we need. Again, if you bought the 4a with the 5G or the Pixel 5 or even the Pixel 3, if they even still sell that, you're going to be clicking the appropriate one for you. So in our case, we're going to download the Google vendor image and the Qualcomm image, okay? So we're going to download both of these and we're going to save those files. So now in the Mutaphone directory, when you click on it, the directory you'll be working in, I'm clicking on Droid Build because I've already done it. You'll see all these folders once the repo has been downloaded, once you've gotten the source code. What you're trying to do is you're trying to get those vendor proprietary binaries ready for when we build, because without those, we're not gonna be able to boot Android on that 4A Pixel device that we just got. So you're gonna basically download those files, which I have right here. So Google's devices and QCOM devices. So you're gonna open both these zip files and you're just gonna drag them into this folder, right? The folder that we're working in, so both of them. Eventually they'll be right here. So extract Google and extract Sunfish. So in order to do this now, we're going to basically run these scripts because these are .sh shell scripts. So again, if you have a terminal closed, just right click, open terminal, and you're gonna type dot slash extract all right, Google, all right, the whole thing, again, use tap to autofill, save yourself some time and insanity, hit enter, and it's gonna ask you, the license will now be displayed. So hit enter and blah, 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 hold space down, and eventually you get to this bottom line. So type in I accept, and it's going to install all of these to vendor slash Google devices. So in this little folder right here. Once you've done that, do the exact same thing for the QCOM Sunfish, so extract, qcom sunfish.sh hit enter hit enter hold space down go back type in i accept in all caps and it'll do all this for you so now you've extracted all those proprietary binaries now we can get to the fun stuff which is actually building the damn thing so okay now in the build system it's going to tell you about the soon build system you don't really need to know a whole lot of this let's just go to the actual build android side okay so here we're going to be running a couple scripts ourselves so go back to our build folder right where all those files were you want you to well let me close the terminal real quick right click open a terminal and inside over here we're going to be typing in a few commands all right and it's just copy and pasting so let me show you what we're doing so in order to do this what we're going to do is we're going to build our source all right so we're going to do source build env environment setup.sh so hit enter and it's going to 
you know, basically set up our environment, right? Now, to see if we're actually good on that, type in HMM, and it's going to show you all of this, okay? So you're good so far. Now, type in clear to clear all of this bullshit out, and let's use something called lunch, okay? So when we type in lunch, all right, lunch gives us this whole list real quick. It's going to take a little bit of seconds, all right, a little bit of time, but it's going to give us 54 options. Because we're installing on the Google Pixel 4a, we're going to find one that says Sunfish. So you can see how we have AOSP ARM64. This would be number 27. So AOSP user, sorry, Sunfish user debug. User debug basically means that it's the standard Android build, but it's already rooted anyways, which means you get all the elevated privileges. Again, please look up based on what Pixel device you bought, because let's say you bought a Pixel 4... A with 5G, you might be Redfin, you might be something. For the base 4A that we have, I know that we are AOSP Sunfish. So once you know that you're number 27, type in number 27 here and hit enter. And it's going to configure this, all right, the target right here. So make sure all of this checks out for you. And once it does, let's move on to the actual fun stuff. Now to build this, all we have to type is the word M. Okay, it's that fucking simple. Hit enter, and now we get to the magic fun stuff of actually building the entire thing. So it's going to run something called Ninja and whatnot, and this is where the build actually begins. So you can walk away for a few hours while this is actually doing its job. There's not much you can do, okay? This will take several hours, a few hours depending on how fast your computer is and whatnot. Now, when I showed you earlier why I got 52 gigs of storage, that's literally because this thing crashed with 32 gigs of RAM. At some point when it was building its neural engine, neural network stuff, whatever that project file was, it apparently ballooned memory usage to like 32 gigs. It started using the swap space, which is an entirely separate range of like memory that you rely and back up on. Crash that. So provided you followed all the steps up until this point, you're good to go. Walk away, you know, get a coffee, you know, have some beers, play some video games, because it ain't going to be done for a while. Now, if we haven't actually done anything yet, we need to make sure USB access works, okay? So underneath this page for the Android developers, we're going to make sure that our Ubuntu Linux device works absolutely well. So what you're going to do is you're going to go down over here and you're going to copy sudo usermod dash a capital G plug dev into the log name, okay? So just paste that in there, hit enter, enter your root password, all right? Is it working? There it is, it works. And uh, after all that, you're gonna basically uh, just do apt sudo install. So again, just do sudo and copy that string in here and hit enter and install that. Now, you should just re-log in for all of this to actually take effect. But once it's done, you're ready to move on to the next step, okay? Now at this point, to flash the device, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you follow these combinations. So turn off your Google device. So for example, the 4A that we have, we're going to first power off the device. So we're going to power it off like this, all right? And here it tells us to hold volume down and hold the power button. So if I hold volume down and hold the power button, this should boot into, yeah, right here. So fast boot, okay? This is basically the screen you want to see on your Google Pixel 4A. So at this point, what you want to do is you want to connect it to the actual device. You want to connect it via USB to your virtual machine. Under VMware, it's probably going to ask you if you want to connect to the host or a virtual machine. Always pick virtual machine and make sure you check it so that it doesn't even have to ask you it again, okay? Just to save yourself some time and sanity. Now you're going to type in fast boot flashing unlock, okay? So once you type that in, it'll basically change this screen and it'll ask you, do you want to unlock the bootloader? Now you actually have to use the volume keys to make the selection, but you want to hit yes. And once that's done, it's time for you to actually start flashing the device. Now at this point, it's going to delete everything off the device. So if you were using it to store all your personal stuff for some reason before doing all this, you want to back that shit up because this is going to flash the device entirely. So once you have it basically connected into your system, you want to make sure you type in ADB reboot bootloader, okay? And the reason you're going to do that is so that you can actually get into the bootloader and once that's all good to go in fast boot which is where we were at this screen all right this one right here you're going to type in fast boot flash all dash w all right so at this point all right if the device is connected do not touch it 
it will do it all for you. This is where it's going to send that built Android that we have and flash it onto the device, okay? So provided you did everything right, it should all just flash up perfectly fine and you're good to go. And there you go, the Mutaphone is finally ready to use. Now, it's not really the Mutaphone, it's whatever you want it to be called, baby, because you built it yourself! Congratulations! You built Android and deployed it on your own device! You're a Good job! It's that easy, okay? We did this shit within 30 minutes, all right? Again, discounting for the amount of hours we lost. So if you have a powerful enough system, you just built your own OS, and you know it's squeaky clean. It's got no Google to it. See, this is Android in its purest form. All the Google stuff fails to work because the APIs just aren't there. This is what Android is like without Google. Now, of course... This comes with its own problems. Google does provide a lot of good backend API stuff to Android. It makes it really fun and easy to use. But if you remove all that, it's not that Android is unusable. It's just you're going to be missing a lot of that magic, okay? So you do get a little bit of an inconvenient system, but hey, it's all yours. Nobody's tracking you. Congratulations, you're innocent and safe. Now, if you want to re-implement Google's proprietary user space apps and libraries, you can use this thing called MicroG, which I think actually comes from the Lineage OS people. And basically, all you have to do is really download a lot of these APKs and install them onto the device, okay? Basically, just connect this to a USB to your computer, drag and drop these APKs, open the file app and install them one by one and follow the on-screen instructions and you're good to go. Now as far as app stores go, there's plenty of app stores for you to pick from. So pick your poison, download it. Uh, some of them even belong to Amazon or Samsung. So, you know, you can still have the big tech fuck you in, in your device if you wanted it. As far as the applications go, there's a few app stores that you can download and get running. Some of them belong to Amazon. Some of them are as free as the ratchetest river that you can find. And ladies and gentlemen, once you get the stuff installed, you can basically install all of those Freedom Phone applications like Parler, like Brave, like Firefox, like whatever you want on your device. Now you've effectively got your own fucking Freedom Phone. Congratulations. Now, I'm not gonna say that this is unusable. It's absolutely a very usable phone. There's nothing wrong with using Android this way. But like I said earlier, without Google, you are going to have to come across a little bit of an inconvenient use, okay? It's gonna take a bit of time to truly um, settle in, okay? You're gonna have to break this device in your own way. I think the best comparison is kind of like Linux. We're using Ubuntu, which is very user-friendly. Anybody can get this going, even your grandma. And then you've got Arch Linux and Gen 2, which are more so for people who are really there to build their own experience. And if you can handle all the technical hurdles and the headaches that come with it, it's absolutely a great choice but this is android without google and this is effectively the same thing as that freedom phone that you're getting now let's say you don't want to go through all that effort okay let's say you want to make this life even easier for you this is lineage os okay something that i actually used to use for a long time and it's actively being updated all right last update last change log was april 1st 2021 so here you go on to download and you got a whole range of devices they constantly build for so if you have something like a asus rogue phone you can go for that if you have a uh, what is it? i think i saw razor right here you can go for that if you have an older Samsung Samsung device before they decided to get real douchey with their bootloader, you can pick some of those. Now, if you have a Google device, you can go to Google and you can go get the uh, Google Pixel 4a. This takes you to this page where what you want to do is you want to download the latest uh, both these files and you want to click installation instructions and basically follow this down to a T and it's not too different than what we just did except this one's a bit curated by a team uh, again you're still going to be detached from Google so they're not going to be pinging your location that is until you install the Google apps but that puts you in the same position as having Google stock Android running on its own. Why the fuck you would go down that road? Why you would go through this trouble and then reinstall the Google apps makes no sense to me, but some people do it. And hey, who am I to tell you how to live your life, right? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's recap. This is a long video already. My recording's looking at like an hour and a half. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, what have we learned today, okay? You don't need to pay somebody $500 to get a Freedom Focus privacy phone, okay? They're just grifting off you. Most likely, they're trying to sell you a phone that's very fucking cheap with a Lineage OS ROM probably installed onto it. I mean, fuck, even one of the features that they have called Trust actually was a built-in feature for Lineage OS, so 
make of that what you will. But uh, why we did this was that you can buy yourself a better quality device. And I can almost assuredly tell you these Pixel devices are probably a lot better than whatever anybody's trying to sell you from any other part of the world, okay? And you don't even need a Pixel device. You can literally buy yourself something from OnePlus, something from Asus, something from a bigger, better brand for the same price. If you're gonna spend $500, spend it on the best hardware that that money's gonna get you. Because a software, as you've seen, is actually quite easy to get going. I mean, it's not like you need a whole lot. Uh, even if you don't wanna build it, there's plenty of ROMs that exist already built for you that you can just download within a minute and already start flashing on a device through a virtual machine. This whole process, if you're using something like Lineage OS, could have taken you 15 minutes to do on your own. Building the whole Android source like we did was the real meat and potatoes of truly doing all of this on your own. And that, if you have the most powerful hardware available right now, is only a matter of a few hours just to download and build the damn thing. It's not the technic it's not the most technically advanced thing to do. The reason why I laughed at that original product, the Freedom Phone, was that the device you're getting, at least to me, looks like it's not the best quality, and the software side of it is something that anybody could have done within 20 minutes. Do not discount your talents. If you think you are technically illiterate, don't worry. If a dumbass like me could do it, Bro, you could do it a lot better. I'm just saying, okay? So ladies and gentlemen, we built our own Freedom Phone, our Mudo OS, or at this point, it's whatever OS you want it to be. Hell, call it the whatever your name is and then add OS at the end of it and bam, you're done. So that's pretty much how you do it. And I'm sure if you wanna re think of this video as a learning point, okay? You learned how to install Android, your own version of Android onto your device. Now you can go the next step. You can learn how to make it better. You can build the ultimate smartphone that's privacy focused for you. So if your goal is to detach from big tech and Google and all these services, there you go. All right, now at the end of the day, the government will still be able to track you through cell towers. So make of that what you will. But ladies and gentlemen, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. I am out.